The speculation this week, given the downside on oil, about 8% was the drop so far through the week, was that OPEC Plus would have to delay putting more oil and more barrels on the market. They finally come out of the statement saying they will do that. Talk us through what we've been hearing from the cartel and their allies and where this leaves the market. Yeah, certainly. With that huge price drop, as you talk about, with the oil complex down 8% over the course of the week, uh, it was over to you as far as OPEC Plus were concerned. All eyes were on how they were going to react. Yesterday afternoon, they put out a statement saying that the eight countries that had announced those voluntary cuts, those 2.2 million barrels per day voluntary cuts that were introduced in 2023, had held a virtual meeting. And on the back of that meeting, they decided to push back the timing of... Uh, tapering those voluntary cuts and essentially what we're seeing now is instead of starting the unwind of the cuts as of October the 1st they've now just pushed it back by two months they're going to start on December the 1st of this year at keeping the exact same tapering schedule as they had in place and therefore are now scheduled to end at the end of December 2025 so just a pushback by a couple of months here there are also a couple of lines in the statement talking about uh, the two serial offenders when it comes to overproduction those are Iraq and Kazakhstan saying that they have been urged to start conforming with the quotas and to come up, come up with compensation plans to uh, reveal to the market how they're planning on compensating for all of the overproduction that they've introduced since January 2024. So those are a couple of highlights that came out from the OPEC Plus statement. Uh, but ultimately what you saw, Tom, is a bit of stabilization come through with the price of oil, uh, but it didn't last very long because at the end of the day, people read it as not them ruling out the possibility of putting further barrels to the market. They've just pushed back that decision by two months. Yeah, and Jemana, that leads me on to a, a pretty obvious question, which is market expectations are then around whether or not they're just going to have to kick the can further down the road, whether in two months' time we revisit this question and they're going to have to kick it back e even further. What, what are the markets thinking about in terms of what could determine that decision? Or does the pressure within the cartel and its allies mean that they're going to have to finally, in two months, actually put some oil back on the market? Yeah, well, you raise a good question there about OPEC plus cohesion. It's always a question. Uh, but the fact that they are able to still come together and make these decisions tells you that uh, they are intent on, on coming out with decisions at a group level. Uh, certainly a lot of pressure on the, the countries that are overproducing. The UAE just also managed to carve out their own quota back at that June meeting to start producing more. So there will be members pushing for further market share. But I will say, as we've been talking about all of this week, the main driver here seems to be the outlook for global demand, the big catalyst for the drop in the price of oil this week uh, was not data coming out of the U.S. It wasn't OPEC. It was actually that China PMI data that disappointed to the downside. So keep an eye out on the data that comes out from China, the demand signals there. In addition, from a seasonal perspective, we're entering into the refinery maintenance season in the U.S., which means that uh, the, the broader demand for uh, crude oil could subside somewhat just from a seasonal perspective. In addition to that, keep an eye on the technicals. I was speaking to some traders yesterday, and they tell me that as we approach that $70 level for Brent, you could start to see some uh, gamma selling, so some options activity get mm. triggered, in which case you would see further downside momentum, in which case uh, you, you would be on alert for further uh, bearish moves to the downside. Um, so keep all of those things in mind. It's not just demand, but also some of the technicals. And then, of course, the non-OPEC supply that we've been speaking about as well that is still hitting the market.